In this video, we will be describing the procedure of tubal recanalization by the laparoscopic method. In order to do the tubal recanalization, it is extremely important to understand the anatomy of the fallopian tube and to realize how the tubes were ligated in the first place. In this case, the tubal ligation which was performed was a laparoscopic tubal ligation. But the problem was, it was done too far medially. That's why the distance which was remaining between the cornual stump and the fimbrial stump was pretty less. The initial step involves infiltration of vasopressin to reduce the bleeding and then freshening the edges of the cornual stump of the fallopian tube as well as the fimbrial stump of the fallopian tube which you can see. Once the edges have been freshened, the suturing is typically begun at the level of the mesosalpinx. The suturing at the level of the mesosalpinx is done using proline sutures. The sutures which we are currently using is a non-absorbable 5-0 proline suture which is used to suture the mesosalpinx. Once the mesosalpinx has been sutured, what it does is it approximates the two cut ends of the stump in close proximity with each other. Once the stumps are approximated, it's easier to carry on the rest of the suturing which typically involves the suturing of the serosal as well as the muscularis layer of the fallopian tubes. One can also take the sutures through the lumen. However, we try and avoid suturing through the lumen because should the tube get recanalized correctly, it might potentially increase the chance for having an ectopic pregnancy. Suturing for laparoscopic tubal recanalization requires microsurgical instruments which are typically 3 mm laparoscopic instruments as you can observe the two needle holders out of which one needle holder which is used in order to hold the suture material and the needle is a 3 mm laparoscopic needle holder. It takes considerable amount of skill in order to suture proline sutures at various angles towards the freshened edges of the two stumps and in the end one can notice that both the stumps are uniformly approximated to each other. At the end of the procedure the patient is counseled in order to repeat a histosonography after three months of the procedure in order to realize and verify that the recanalization which has been done has been done correctly and there is anastomosis which has now existent in the tube. 